Okay. <laughs> All right. Told everyone. The main topic in the, this week's parsha uh, concerns itself with the big day kahuna, the garments that were made for our own and his sons. The Gemara teaches us that uh, if they did not wear those garments, they could not uh, participate in the service in the Beit HaMikdash. Those that did not have the proper garments uh, were uh, excluded from work in the Beit HaMikdash. So the garments are important. And the question is why? And what's so special about having, you know, a uniform? I mean, our own is our own uh, with, with the garments and without the garments. So uh, there are different ideas that are presented here regarding the garments. The Torah itself expresses the reason for the garments, that they should be lechavodu letiferet. They should bring honor, respect, to the ones that wear it, will it defer it, then they should bring glory. A sense of awe, a sense of majesty because of the garments. So in the first all question, the chavodu letiferet for whom? Who is supposed to be the beneficiary of the honor and of the glory? So the simple explanation, which we would all deal with, is that it, uh, it's for the glory of Hashem. It's covered Hashem. In other words, you cannot come, the, the uh, example that's always used in the Midrashim is that of Melech Basar Vadom, a human king. If you get an appointment uh, to meet with the king, uh, you don't go with a torn t-shirt. So perhaps today you do, I don't know, but... In my time, you dress up. There's something that's called formal wear. You go to a special occasion. So you have to dress differently. That's for the honor of the occasion. It's for the honor of the host. It's the honor for the purpose of the occasion. So this is for the honor of Hashem. And we find that in the Hilchus Tefillah also. That a person should wear decent clothing. And that uh, there are concepts in Halacha, Big Day Shabbos, Big Day Yonta, Got in that are worn on Yom Kippur. That's Lechavodu Litifaris. That's for the honor and glory of the Rabboni Shalom. There's a second interpretation that the Mephorshim also quote that it's Lechavodu Litifaris of the Kohen. 
you have by the Kohanim, we have Aloha the Kiddash them. You will make the person holy. So it could be that uh, the person is not so holy in our eyes. Nevertheless, the Torah emphasizes to us that we have to treat a Kohen differently. He's entitled to lead the benching. He's entitled to the first aliyah. His status of being a Kohen gives him entitlement. I remember when I was at uh, Miami Beach, so there was a very wealthy woman. If she wouldn't have been very wealthy, we would have said that she was insane, but <laughs> she was wealthy enough only to be considered eccentric. And uh, she used to sit next to my wife, to Jackie and the Ezra Nashu. My wife was a long suffering person. I trained her that way. So she told me one day that, you know, whatever, when it came to Birchat Kohanim, Mrs. So-and-so always walked out of the shul. She never stayed for Birchat Kohanim. So uh, one day my wife asked her, you know, why don't you stay for Birchat Kohanim? It's such a beautiful thing. And here in the exile, it doesn't happen that often. Why do you walk out? She said, those bunch of schnorrers are going to bless me. So she missed the whole point. And then before she say that, that's one of the reasons why the Kohanim cover their faces when they bless the people. So that we shouldn't recognize who the Kohen is. Because if we recognize who the Kohen is, we will also say that Schnorr is going to bless me. So it's the status of the Kohen. It's to raise him to that level. That's what makes it the Chavot of the Ferret. It's the Kohen of the Kohen. It's the Tiferet to the Kohen. It's the understanding that the kuna is special. And then there's a third idea that is mentioned here, lechavoru letiferet, is that refers to the kohol, to the uh, kihila, to klal Yisrael to those that don't participate in the Avoda in the Beit HaMikdash, to those that are not the ones that give the blessing. But if you receive, uh, people receive citations or medals or other awards, uh, in England, I think they still... Uh, Night people. So now you call him sir. You can be made a lord. I remember the late uh, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, Ronald Brotha. So I once had the honor of being on the same program with him. And he had to go somewhere. So he spoke first, and then uh, I was supposed to speak. So I said, uh, I always wanted to speak after the Lord. But he's the Lord. He got the award. He's special. So it's the covenant to ferret for the recipients. For those who are given the blessings, 
So it's their honor as well. And the truth of the matter is that if we think about it, all three are correct, all three are present. It's for the honor of the Kohanim themselves. It's for the honor of the Rabbonish Olam, certainly. And it's the honor for Kuala Yisra, that there are special people that bless them. And that there is, so to speak, a nobility amongst Kuala Yisra, which stems from being a descendant of Aaron Akoe. Now that nobility carries with it certain restrictions which are understandable if you're at an exalted level. So we expect more from you. So we'll see uh, later in the Torah, in the Chumash Vayikra, uh, the Torah will record for us. Parshat Mot. The restrictions on the Kohanim. Because since they are to be lekovot litiferet, they have to behave in a certain way. They have to be bound to certain rules. Every promotion contains within it restrictions, things that you can no longer do. And that's part of the Kavodu Lutiferet. The restrictions themselves are the honor, the glory of the Kohen. So to remind us of that, the Kohen wore special garments. And the Kohen Gadol wore four extra garments. And when the Kohen Gadol walked, everybody heard him coming because he had little bells at the bottom of his cloak. That was all to generate within the feeling of the Jewish people that all of this was l'chavod u'letiferet. And that uh, the Torah repeats over and over again. And the covenant with the Kohanim remains in force until today, even though there is no Migdash, there's no service in the temple. But a Kohen is a Kohen. And the Torah wants us to remember that. And therefore, uh, the adage that clothes make the man is true here too. That clothes make the man. And the Torah wanted us to understand that. And therefore, it's detailed description of the big day kahuna. Rabbi Hananya ben Akashi, Omerot Sakhosh Borku, Zakos Israel, a few of Hirbal, I am Torah, and it's all. She never had another face a month ago, and a deal to all the other.